Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Sandy McRae in this segment. He's joining us here as president and CEO of Sangamo Therapeutics. It's a longstanding pioneer in genomic medicine. He's joining us this evening to discuss the structural barriers that are keeping genomic medicine from reaching its full potential. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. McRae, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you, thank you, Neil. A pleasure to be with you. Well, I'll give you a bit of your professional background, if you would, briefly, and talk about the mission there at Sangamo. Uh, I'm delighted to. I'm a Scottish physician. I trained as an endocrinologist in London. I did PhDs in Cambridge and postdoc in, in uh, the U.S. at Duke, and then worked in the pharmaceutical industry for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And then I was introduced to Sangamo, and Sangamo is a wonderful company. It brings together groundbreaking science with a mission to make these medicines for patients with important diseases. And that's what we're delighted to talk with you about tonight. I mentioned that you're we're going to discuss some of the, the structural barriers that are keeping genomic medicine from reaching its full potential. We spoke with your, your CMO quite some time ago, uh, Bettina Cockcroft. Uh, since then, in the last couple of years, what have been Sangamo's, I guess, a couple of key milestones to date, and what are you currently working on there? We're at such an exciting time. We have three medicines in the clinic with compelling results. With our friends at Pfizer, we have hemophilia A data that, that looks great. It's, uh, it's showing that patients can walk away from taking factor eight and lead a normal life without the burden of constantly thinking about are they going to bleed or not. Mm-hmm. We have best-in-class Fabry data where um, this, this, was, this is going to sound trivial, but the patient tell us that they are starting to sweat again. For a Fabry patient, that's really important because mm-hmm. it allows them to exercise, allows them to go to warm places, and it speaks to the fact that the enzyme that we've put into the liver is getting into the tissues and having its effect. But finally, and I think most importantly, in sickle disease, we have an asset that means that patients don't sickle. So sickling is an awful disease. It's um, it's an uh, underserved community. It's a disease that hasn't had the attention it should have. And when we edit the um, uh, red cell progenitors in, in the blood, what happens is that patients reproduce their fetal hemoglobin, the thing that happened when they were in the uterus, and they no longer sickle. And it's incredible. As a physician, having treated these patients and seen the pain they go through, how hard it is for them to get care, the idea that they now have find benefit is is a remarkable one. And that's just the near-term things with Sangamo. We're about to, you, to uh, introduce the first ever CAR T reg to control um, immunological diseases. We have brain projects that are that are with partners and also with our own team. Mm. Uh, the, the joy about Sangamo is how many choices we have to make and how many options we have ahead of us. What types of challenges is Sangamo overcoming as far as genomic medicine reaching its full potential and uh, overcoming some manufacturing challenges as well? It's an interesting question. Um, and I would take it, I would, I would say that the biggest challenge is for us is choosing of all the options that we have to do, mm-hmm. which ones we take forward. It's about understanding benefit risk. And I want to take a moment to talk about that because uh, genomic medicines go into a patient and they stay with them for the rest of their rest of their life, we, we hope. And therefore, you need to do something that you're absolutely sure has the, has the most benefit for the patient and has a risk that is balanced by that benefit. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, people like Bettina, our chief medical officer, uh, and I spend a lot of time choosing which diseases really the patient doesn't have anything else that would give them the same benefit. And that we have taken the time to show that it is safe and the right thing for the patient. What are the other challenges we have? We have challenges of delivery. So uh, our technology works always when we do it in a test tube. It works at high doses in animals. 
in humans, the challenge is, can we get it to all the tissues? So at the moment, we can get our medicines to the liver. We can get our medicines mostly to the brain. But there are patients out there, people out there that have diseases of the lung or the kidney mm -hmm. or the heart that we there just currently isn't a good way to deliver to those organs. That will be solved. Mm -hmm. In my lifetime, in our lifetime, Neil, that will be solved. And when that happens, a whole new range of medicines will open up for genomic medicines. You spoke about uh, what's happening currently. What are some uh, future milestones that you're looking forward to? I am so excited about the CAR-T regs. Uh, we acquired a company in France in 2018, and we were working diligently with real experts in the field. And as we do that, there's now seven different competitors appearing at our site. We're in front, and we have a technology that for patients with multiple sclerosis, for inflammatory bowel disease, for perhaps even diabetes in the future, mm -hmm. we hope that we have something that will go in and be able to coordinate and control the inflammatory process and help these patients avoid taking the whole a panoply of drugs that they have to do now so as we can reset their autoimmune system. We have uh, partnerships with Biden to look at Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's disease with Novartis with uh, autism spectrum disorders and, and really in in my time in medicine, we've moved from a kind of phenomenological, um, what the patient says version of disease to really understanding the molecular basis, the, um, the, the biology, the biochemistry behind a disease. And the, we're at the forefront of a wave of medicines, both at Sangamo and at other companies, that will really be precision medicines uh, understanding what the patient, what's, what it, the patient's individual problem is, understanding what the disease and how it works within the coordinated system of the body, and having the technology and the manufacturing, as you rightly say, to be able to give that patient the solution that they need. Is this precision medicine, do you believe, will be the biggest uh, transformation as far as clinical medicine is concerned when it comes to your specific gene therapy and editing technology? Yeah, it's it's really important. Um, the idea that all of us that have hypertension, high blood pressure, have the same high blood pressure, is a kind of 19th, 18th, 19th century version understanding of medicine. And as we unpack it, we find it, what causes your high blood pressure is different from what causes my high blood pressure. Now, there are challenges that come with that because it's like... Um, having a suit made where you go into I don't know, Banana Republic and you get a suit off the rack, it's going to obviously be cheaper, but it might not fit you and I, Neil. Whereas if you go into a high-end tailor, he, will, he or she will give you a suit that fits you perfectly and me one that is perfect for mine. Mm -hmm. And what we as a society, as an ecosystem need to agree is, how often is it important that the suit fits just perfectly and is the right one exactly for you? And how often is it sufficient that um, we get it off the rack, but that we can afford more of those suits so as many of us are treated and treated easily? And that's a, a big society discussion. It's not for me and my company to determine. It's for governments. It's for all of us to talk about at what point is it good enough and what point is it necessary? Great analogy and well said. Give us a website where we can learn more about Sangamo. Uh, we'd love for people to come and visit us at sangamo.com. Uh, what we're doing is important and we can only do this if we listen to what people say and understand what it is that they are uh, willing to come on the journey with us because we do this together. 
I thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening, Sandy. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Sandy McRae, President and CEO of Sangamo Therapeutics. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.